Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the EOB Podcast. So last weekend, we have the release of four movies, uh, the biggest of which is uh, the Jason Statham uh, shark movie, The Meg, which is short for the uh, Megalodon, a uh, prehistoric shark. Um, and then we have uh, the uh, uh, horror movie Slender Man and Spike Lee's um, Black Klansman. And also the uh, dog movie Dog Days. Let's see how those movies did at the box office. All right, so let's jump right in. Uh, coming in number one, surprisingly, is The Meg. Or not, maybe not surprisingly, but it, it, what's surprising about The Meg is how much it opened to. The movie opened to about 45.4 million, which is way above what a box office analyst, including me, uh, were expecting. So... Um, what were we expecting? I think, uh, you know, I was projecting the movie to open to maybe 15 to 20 million. Other analysts were, you know, like doing 20 million or so, right? But then something unexpected happened. For some reason, uh, this movie blew up. It opened to 45 million. So, uh, and, uh, you know, the movie has uh, uh, 48% on the tomato meter, so not that well reviewed but given the genre it is actually decent you know 48% run Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes and the cinema score is only B plus which is kind of like average for the movie so how do you explain the 45 million opening for the Meg um, I you know some attribute it to the uh, the advertisement the last minute advertisement that the market marketing team did right but you know marketing can only do so much right I mean other movies you know do marketing right but they somehow bombed but for some reason this one succeeded uh go figure right because you know you have jason Statham, right he is far from his peak and then there is the shark movie you know like kind of like jaws right but you know schlocky uh you don't see the appeal there right jason Statham, you know he's known for his martial arts movies and the meg is not one of those movies right unless he you know kick and punch the, sh the, the shark uh right uh you know something that people might be you know paying money to see willing to pay money to see right and then um that feature kind of like a largely Asian cast as well. You know, the movie's financed by Asian money, so, you know, co-production with China, you know, Chinese company, you know, it's a China play uh, to get around the restriction of like the uh, annual 34 movies restriction that China plays for outside movies, right? So they can open more and can uh, get more from China market. And uh, speaking of China, right, the movie, you know, had uh, like uh, open to like 50 million in China, which is pretty good uh, for an opening figure. So the Meg, an expected outcome for for Jason Statham and Shark. Who knew that combination would result in a 45 million opening? So I couldn't explain it. I think other people, uh, box office analysts, couldn't explain this opening as well, right? You know, they have all the ingredients of a um, kind of like a B movie ish, <laughs> a B movie, right? You know, you have Jason Statham, right? Not a list actor, right? You have all these Asian faces, um, you know, not a huge draw, right? But for some reason, here in America, USA, USA uh, it opened to 45 million. It's, it could be one of these uh, like lightning in a bottle movies, right? Uh, right place, right time. Uh, people wanted a shark movie with Jason Statham in it, and this one delivers, right? Uh, it has a concept, you know, instead of a shark, it is the Megalodon, which is like a prehistoric uh, a shark, which is like the biggest in the world, right? This humongous shark, you know, it's just not a shark. I mean, the shark is already huge in the first place, right? But this is one, this one is even bigger. And, um, you know, reviews weren't kind to it, right? 48%. But hey, you know, it's one of these genre movies. People wanted to see a creature feature, you know, in this case, a shark, a giant shark at that. Uh, and there you go. The Meg. Will it hold up on the second weekend? I doubt it. I think it will drop off huge the second weekend, maybe in the 60% range. Because, again, like I say, I don't know the reason why uh, this movie did as well as it did, right? But it did. All right, and I guess, uh, like I say, one of these movies that's right place, right time. And I don't believe the explanation uh, put out by uh, a publication that, you know, it's the marketing team uh, who did the work to bring people into this movie. So we'll see how it performs the second weekend. And one thing I forgot to mention about The Meg is that it costs $150 million to make. All right, N now think about this. Who would invest $150 million in a shark movie starring Jason Statham and... 
uh, you know, an Asian cast surrounding him. Think about it, right? So it kind of blew my mind that um, this movie did as well as it did. So I don't know. Maybe there's some shenanigans going on. Maybe, like I said, it's one of these uh, lightning in the bottle movies. But you have to go back to the original decision to finance a movie with Jason Statham, sharks, uh, Chinese actors, um, 150 million. All right, let's move on to number two, which is Mission Impossible Fallout, the sixth Mission Impossible movie starring Tom Cruise. It pulled in 19.3 million, uh, a 45% drop off from the previous weekend, uh, 161 million domestically, and and worldwide is at 436 million, 275 million of that from overseas. So it is one of the higher grossing uh, Mission Impossible movies. So which is probably going to uh, be in the top three. Uh, gr- grosser uh, in this uh, in this franchise once it's said and done all right let's move on to number uh three which is disney's uh, christopher christopher robbins it pulled in about 13 million in the second weekend drop off is about 47 percent and domestic growth is about 50 million so far and let's see worldwide it hasn't opened that wide overseas yet and uh, with 12 million of that from there uh for worldwide worldwide total of 63 million and this is a movie that i thought could open up in the 35 30 to 35 million range but it opened to about 25 million um <clears throat> And uh, I gave the movie a big bump because I I was convinced that Disney's marketing team could bring people in, but then again I had the reservation that you know this is a Pooh movie, uh, you know Winnie the Pooh. His previous two movies, the animated ones, uh, did uh, only open to about seven uh, and uh, you know and eight million you know respectively. So low opening for this uh, movie for this character for this franchise, and for it to do you know like twenty. Five, you know, point seven, you know, twenty-five million is, I guess, okay. But I was, I was expecting bigger things since it has the Disney brand behind it, Disney marketing behind it. I thought it could open, you know, a bit higher, but it didn't, you know. And but this, I guess, kind of pulled in poo numbers, even though it's, uh, even though it's still better than the animated films. But you know, still, right? I, I think the the poo film. Um, cost about how much did it cost of uh, 75 million so it's gonna do all right it's gonna do all right at the box office but not a huge money maker for Disney and um, you know it could be one of these movies where uh, Disney uh, is uh, you know just making to kind of rejuvenate the, the franchise you know to make it uh, to put it out there that hey you know there are these characters when you the pool sitting on our shelves we're dusting them up and you know giving them a fresh coat of paint and here it is and remember uh disney is kind of refreshing the library with uh, live actions all their uh, previous hits animated hits or getting the live action makeover and you know uh, christopher robbins is the latest one you know with winnie the pool all right, let's move on to number four, Slender Man, the horror movie starring nobody you ever heard of. Uh, it pulled in about 11 million, which is surprising. I, you know, it did a bit better than what I uh, expected. Um, I said the movie could probably open, uh, you know, in the eight to 10 million range, but it did a bit better. It opened to 11.4 million. Uh, reviews are decidedly terrible, as expected, right? 14% at Rotten Tomatoes and a D minus cinema score. So, you know, horror fans went and, you know, Gave, gave it a thumbs down. Uh, expect a huge drop off, right? Um, like I said, this movie is based on, I believe, uh, real events about, uh, you know, uh, friends who killed um, uh, one of their friends uh, because, you know, they said uh, uh, this character, Slender Man, this, this fantastical character, Gox or whatever, uh, convinced them to do it. And that's the defense. Um, and that's happened a couple of years later, and I said that, uh, you know, people have moved on, but this is a horror movie, and there are fans of horror movies, as you can see with the opening. Uh, expect a huge drop off because, you know, horror movies uh, are generally, generally very front loaded. Um, I believe, uh, you know, a uh, drop off in the 60 to 70 percent range is not unexpected. If it did uh, drop uh, lower, then that's really unexpected 
<laughs> okay, and uh, the movie only cost 10 million to make already. It made back its budget, right, in at the box office. Um, like I said, expect uh, the movie to drop off huge the second weekend and onwards. All right, let's move on to number five, which is the uh, Spike Lee's um, drama, uh, Black Klansman with a KKK in the middle. Um, uh, uh, you know, it's about um, a guy, a black cop, rookie cop who infiltrated uh, the local clan chapter, right? And then uh, Adam Diver is his uh, persona, the live persona, you know, uh, in, in the real life in the movie. Uh, he made the call, you know, he is the guy in the background making phone calls, you know, pretending to be this hateful guy who hates everything except whites. And Adam Diver is, you know, this is his partner in crime. Uh, you know, he represented, he pretended to be the, the guy, the rookie cop, uh, when he went, uh, you know, out to, you know, meet the, the Klansmen. And, you know, this is a Spike Lee movie, uh, supposedly one of his uh, better review movies, 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and uh, I said the movie uh, could probably open in the 15 to 20 million range. And that is just me not doing my homework. And if I looked at his filmography, most of his movies uh, kind of open lower, right? His recent movie, you know, from a couple years back, opened to like 1 million. One opened to 885K. And another one opened to only 40K, right? And uh, I guess the biggest movie uh, uh, opening, uh, then the biggest opening for Spike Lee is that movie, that his commercial movie, his most commercial movie. Um, which is uh, Inside Man, starring Denzel Washington. That one opened to um, uh, 28 million, right? Went on to gross 88, 88 million domestically. But his other ones are opening sub tens, right? With a uh, exception of, uh, of like the the original Kings of Comedy, right? Most of them opening open, you know, in a sub 10 million range, you know, like two, four, seven, nine, one million, you know, less than one million. So that is just me. Um, <laughs> Black Clansman is just me not doing my homework you know I, I thought this one is, is more commercial than his usual fare right but you know kind of fall within uh, you know his range there but e even though it is still above what his um, average is right but you know kind, kind of there kind of there right but still off all right let's move on to number six which is the spy who dumped me starring Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon directed by Susanna Fogo a comedy already a comedy at that um, it, it 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 pulled in about 6.5 million in its uh, second weekend. Drop off is about 47 percent, which is okay, a decent drop off, right? Domestic gross is about 25 million so far, and internationally, uh, it's at 31 million, seven million of that from overseas. Um, again, I thought this movie could open better. I said I could open to 20 to 25 million because you know it stars Mila Kunis who for some reason or another became this uh, you know symbol of like the female movies right she starred in Bad Moms, Bad Moms Christmas um, you know those movies did well right and this is a comedy which is kind of more high profile except maybe this one's more too actiony too actiony for the, the female audience right and the you know already comedy action comedy uh, which is kind of like the forte of someone like Melissa McCarthy right but Kunis is not Melissa McCarthy right she doesn't have that draw for uh, as a Melissa McCarthy for these type of movies so she's probably more um, you know uh, more well accepted I guess in the if you know in movies that are kind of like the, the bad moms you know it doesn't have these outlandish um, you know scenarios like spies uh, action adventure you know it's, it's more uh, you know grounded down to earth kind, kind, kind of th those kind of movies all right so that's uh, the spy who dumped me so let's move on to um, number seven which is Mama Mia here we go again the sequel to the 2008 musical uh, this one pulled in 5.8 million in its fourth weekend uh, domestic gross is 103 million and worldwide it is at 281 million 178 million of that from overseas the first Mamma Mia movie uh, op uh, has a domestic gross of 144 million uh, this one is at 103 million you know about you know 
41 million left to go. <laughs> but still, you know, still a very profitable movie for uh, Universal, right? It only cost 75 million to make and it already grows, pulled, and it already pulled in, um, you know, 281 million worldwide. So, yay. All right, let's move on to number eight, which is The Equalizer 2. Uh, the Denzel Washington actioner uh, pulled in about 5.4 million over the weekend in its fourth weekend already. Uh, 84, 89 million uh, domestic and 99 million worldwide. The budget is 62 million. So as you can see, um, the sequel is not as well received as the first movie. Um, you know, the first movie had a domestic gross of 100 and 1 million. You no, know, I mean the, the the movie could still get there domestically, but um, worldwide, you know, it could. Fall, fall short, right? The first movie grossed 192 million worldwide and, um, well, pretty much 100 more million to go. So, yeah. All right, let's move on to number nine, which is Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation. It pulled in about 5.2 million. Uh, domestic gross is um, 146 million. Um, and worldwide is, is at 379 million. So, you know, another successful entry in the Hotel Transylvania franchise is going to beat out the first movie in uh, gross um, at least domestically right so we're going to see more hotel transylvanias okay all right let's round out the top 10 with ant-man and the wasp it pulled in 4.1 million over the weekend uh 203 million domestically and 449 million worldwide all right let's round out um the re releases with uh, the notable entry with Dog Days, which opened on a Wednesday. Uh, stars, I guess the biggest name star in the movie is uh, Vanessa Hudgens, um, Eva Longoria. And it pulled in 2.6 million over the weekend. Um, this is a movie I said um, could open, you know, could pull in three, 5 million three days and uh, 10 million five days, but it kind of fail to live up to my expectations because you know it is a dog movie uh but unfortunately this is a movie that um i know like as big a star as vanessa hedgen right and eva longor is in here right but still she's kind of you know not not in in her prime days right but then again pulling in 3.6 million five days is really disappointing for a movie with dogs right all right so that's it for the uh releases let's move on to the openings we have the uh, much typed uh, movie that's starring an all Asian cast, um, Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, that's based on a book by Kevin Kwan. We have Alpha, and then we have Mile 22. All right, let's start off with Crazy Rich Asians. Um, as I said, it's a movie that's based on a book by Kevin Kwan. Uh, it's directed by John M. Chu, and it stars... Um, uh, Constance Wu, Henry Goldberg, uh, Michelle Yeoh, Aquafina, Ken Jong, Jimmy O Yang, Harry Shum Jr., which is kind of like the Lord of the Rings for you know Asian you know actors here. That <laughs> and as I said, it is uh, you know it's opening on a Wednesday. Uh, I guess it, to give it a head start. Review wise, it's 100% uh, Rotten Tomatoes so far. Let me take a quick look. Yeah, it's still at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, very well reviewed. Uh, this is this book has been embraced by the liter literati, and th most of the press uh, on this movie is about the cultural significance. Uh, right? When was the last time a Hollywood movie, um, you know, that stars an all Asian cast? Right? Probably back we have to go back to the joy luck club right way from way back when and uh crazy rich asians is um you know has a lot of writing on it i guess uh, from a cultural standpoint people are saying this will probably change uh casting in hollywood if it succeed you know if it succeed if this movie succeed if it blows up at the box office then you know casting directors might not be so reluctant to cast cast Asian actors in you know leading roles and um, you know and don't have to cast um, uh, you know white actors in Asian roles for example you know if it succeed right it'll be like the Black Panther of uh, Asian movies <laughs> right remember like uh, you know before Black Panther people uh, I mean people are doubtful that or Hollywood is doubtful that um, you know a movie that's starring an all-black cast 
could you know succeed uh, or to to uh, to have a big opening blockbuster you know worldwide and uh, uh, Black Panther proved them wrong so crazy crazy rich Asians could be you know this movie for Asian actors right could, could be that having said that I don't think this movie is Black Panther it, I, it won't do Black Panther box office um, right it is a romantic comedy about a, um, a professor played by Wu uh, who went back to Singapore to um, meet um, his um, you know, fiancés or boyfriends uh, parents family <laughs> And discover that he is kind of like the pr Prince Henry of uh, you know in Singapore, right? His very wealthy family. She probably didn't come from a rich family, or maybe even if she's rich, she's not that rich, right? These are crazy rich people. So, how well will this movie do? I think this movie could open somewhere in the 35 to 40 million range, right? I think that is a safe estimate uh, because you know of all the press that's generated for this movie. And like I said, this book, the book has been adopted by the literary who are not, you know, Asian, you know. They are multicultural. Um I think they will go out to watch the this movie. Um the cast, um you know, are attractive, the leads, especially the leads, right? Constance Wu and here we going, you know, attractive people. Uh, they'll pull them in. There's Aquafina, you know, the the rapper, actress, model. Uh, the fans, Ken Ken Jong is in there, you know, he has his fans. Jimmy O Yang, you know, they they'll pull them in, right? So uh, thirty five to forty million is a safe bet. It is a romantic comedy, and the leads, I guess, are not that well known outside of Constance. She has, uh, you know, she's the star of uh, um, the Fresh Off the Boat, that that comedy series on TV. Um, so it is still kind of an unproven, you know, the leads are still kind of unproven, but who knows? It could be, like I said, one of these cultural movies like Black Panther, where, you know, certain part of the demographic will go out and watch it multiple times. Who knows? But I, like I said, I don't see it. It's not one of those movies. It's not like a Ban Black Panther movie where, uh, people would watch it for the, um, the production, the action, right? Uh, it is a romantic comedy, you know, it's not Titanic. <laughs> where people watch it multiple times. I don't think it's this one is one of that movie one of those movies. So thirty five to forty million for crazy rich Asians. Uh over the weekend. Right? Um that's for three days, right? Three days. Let's let's do a three days. For five days. Let's give it a bump. Five days, uh, fifty million for five days. How about that? Right? Five days, fifty million. Uh, the weekend, three day, three day weekend is thirty five to forty million for crazy rich Asians. All right, let's go with that. All right, let's move on to Alpha. So yeah, so this movie is about a a teenager who got separated from his tribe and he has to learn to survive on his own and he befriend befriends a wolf and I guess this starts off the uh, I guess the friendship the the you know between you know man and animals and how they uh, you know and then you know them becoming dogs I guess the transformation of uh, like uh, humans um, living with dogs or animals yeah so this is. I guess the origin story of that. So, uh, like I said, this is an odd movie, right? Uh, it doesn't star anybody that you recognize, and the lead actor, the, the that teenager who got lost, uh, you know, is uncharismatic. You know, because as expected of a young, inexperienced actor, <coughs> who looks he's uh, better cast in a stoner comedy, for example, right? Instead of this action action adventure. So I think this movie could probably open, you know, five million. Yeah, I, like I say, I don't see the appeal of this movie, but who knows, right? The marketing team for Alpha could, you know, work in overdrive, you know, during the week to bump up the box office for these movies, like they did for uh, the Meg, right? <laughs> No. Okay. All right. Let's move on to Mile Twenty Two, which stars Mark Wahlberg. Uh, you know he's teaming up with um, <clears throat> Peter Berg again. You know the guy who directed Long Survivor and a couple of his other movies. Uh, da, 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 da. So and uh, Eco Uai, Uai, yeah, Eco Uai from the Raid movies is here. The Singaporean actor. Ronda Rousey is here, the WWE star, formerly of the, uh, uh, the uh, you know, I think UFC, you know, MMA. John Malkovich is here. 
So this movie is about, you know, Mark Wahlberg transporting, you know, some guy uh, to another place so that he can be interrogated, right? And it's similar to that Bruce Willis movie, 16 Blocks, where, you know, he needs to transport a witness to the courthouse. It's kind of like that. And, it's, you know, between the, the you know, his the start point and this end point, you know, terrorists, uh, you know, attempt to, you know, extract the witness and or the asset or whatever you call it, that, that person. And they fight it out. Um, you know, and Mile 22 is an action movie. And, you know, Peter Berg, Mark Wahlberg, an action movie usually do okay, do pretty well, right? Uh, except that when it's based on true life story, then, you know, th th they falter. But um, for Mile 22, it's an action movie, kind of like 16 Blocks. Um, so I expect this movie to open in the 25 to 30 million range because, you know, that's what um, his other action movies usually open to, kind of like that. And it also has uh, Eco UI, you know, that, that uh, the star from The Raid. And, you know, he has his action pieces, right? Alright, tune in next week to see how I did with my projections. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.